why are the relations between Israel and the United States of America so strong, and how far back does it actually go? Unfortunately, the answer to that would be an extremely long one. So this video could either end up being several hours or preferably a few minutes. I will, however, need to reference the various sources and articles as outlined uh, to give the talking points as to why our relations are the way they are and what led to them. Starting with what many people do not know is that our idea of a two-state uh, Israel-Palestine solution, for lack of a better word, was only brought up after World War II and the Holocaust. In reality, this was actually brought up uh, during 1919 in the, uh, I believe it was, Ford administration on that. It was Woodrow Wilson, I apologize. Woodrow Wilson, who was sympathetic to the plight of Jews in Europe and favorable to Zionist objectives, giving his assent to the text of the Balfour Declaration shortly before its release, stated on March 2nd, 1919, I am persuaded that the Allied nations with the fullest concurrence of our own government and people are agreed that in Palestine shall be laid the foundation of a future Jewish commonwealth. And on April 16, 1919, corroborated the U.S. government's expressed acquiescence in the Balfour Declaration. So, as far back as post-World War I, this was being discussed. Now, why Palestine is uh, not necessarily listed out here, but we can, of course, uh, come to the same conclusions. Uh, it's the Holy Land, and Israel claims that that is their land. And Palestine, of course, was in existence while Israel, a state, was not. And therefore, the discussion of, well, surely they can just get along. They're, they're there anyway, right? That, that's where their people's histories go. Once again, Western powers, using their colonization background, decided to divvy up and basically make abstract decisions in a region that they had no understanding, cultural significance, influence, or part in whatsoever. This is what they priorly did to Africa, what they did to China, and other parts of South America and the world besides. So in reality, U.S. relations with Israel before Israel was Israel began in 1919. This would then further compound as the years went on after Nakba, which is not explicitly uh, stated, but it did mention after the state of Israel was formed, U.S. relations began and the United States was the first to recognize Israel. Now, what is very interesting is how this relationship developed from the lens of history. What was going on post-World War II that would imply needing a presence in the Middle East? The Cold War. Why the Cold War? Because the USSR actually spans from Europe to the other side of Asia and therefore has uh, southern influence as well on Central Asian and Middle Eastern countries. And those influences impacted, you guessed it, oil and other natural resources. And therefore, Soviet influence in those Middle Eastern countries, a lot of the Stans that are out there, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, were part of the USSR. And so they were encroaching ever, ever downward. Whereas with Israel being recognized by the United States and being supported by the United States through both uh, general funds and military support, which began with France, I might add, it became prevalent and obvious to the United States to make Israel their ally. What is not very well described in most of our news cycle today is that most of those relationships that we had with Israel and a lot of the occurrences that happened in the Middle East during that time were extremely, extremely contentious. For one, in 1967, during the Six-Day War, Israeli jets and torpedo boats attacked the USS Liberty, a U.S. Navy intelligence ship in Egyptian waters, killing 34 and wounding 171. Israel stated that the Liberty was mistaken as the Egyptian vessel El Qasir, and it was an instance of friendly fire. The U.S. government accepted it as such, although the incident raised much controversy, and some still believe it to be deliberate. So throughout this tenuous history and relationship between the United States and Israel, Israel has in fact attacked the United States, granted as friendly fire. Furthermore, Israel, using military arms and armament and supplies, have instigated significantly more conflicts in the Middle East 
than they themselves were received. In fact, throughout most of this article, I don't see anything in which Israel was attacked first. Everything was a response to Israeli aggression. So why was Israel so aggressive? That's not in this article, nor is it necessarily part of this discussion, but it comes down to the mantra or the doctrine of Zionism. Zionism, very broadly put, is basically the supremacy of Israel's existence. The Israeli people, the Jewish state, if you will, is superior to all others in the world because they are the God's chosen people. That is fundamentally why Israel believes they can do what they want in the Middle East. And of course, they have the United States as a partner. What is interesting in this entire discussion is that the United States' relationship with Israel was less about maintaining control of the Middle East, but rather being a barrier and buffer to the Soviet Union and their influence. And that is what truly escalated a lot of the other uh, incidents down in the Middle East. Many of those situations, such as when Egyptian leader Nasir uh, nationalized the Suez Canal, preventing, of course, trade through the Suez Canal, could have instantly sparked an international incident. Of course, Israel and Egypt were at each other's throats, but it was, it was threatening to drag in the United States and Soviet uh, power at the time. And so there was negotiation, there was prevention of escalating conflict, and Israel was told to stand down. And this happens again and again and again throughout history. What's also of note is that of the 48 times the United States has issued its veto power, 24 of those times have been to protect Israel. Now, without getting into the conspiracy theories and without getting into any of that nonsense, a country that is that powerful is using its power to protect another country for the semblance of a stronghold and barrier and buffer in the Middle East. So, why go into this very brief history stemming from 1919 to the present? It's so we can understand the present and why, although it is heinous and appalling what Israel is doing in Palestine to the Palestinian people by committing genocide against them, it is not unsurprising that this administration is being supportive. Historically, even when JFK was going to hold Israel accountable or when other presidents have held Israel accountable and admonished their actions, to include Ronald Reagan. It never actually soured the relations, and it never really resulted in Israel's aggression being tempered, curbed, or stopped. And so what we are seeing today is literally, once again, a repeat of history, except instead of the USSR, it's now terrorism, in general terrorism. And Israel is the number one threat against Iranian aggression. And of course, I believe we're also arguing that China and Russia are once again being influenced and involved in the Middle East, and therefore Israel being a partner is paramount to preventing their geopolitical influence in the region. That end, I once again state that as future president of this country, I will hold Israel accountable. And if that means severing relations with them and sanctioning them and taking every single legal action that our country can, to include ending any form of trade, including and especially arms, I will. We will, and we will start being the country that we claim to be by enforcing international law and allowing it to exercise its rights and its authority against backed actors, even if it isn't in our best interest.